Hi, zoologist. How are you doing? I am your tutor, Majid Khan, from Department of Zoology, GPGC, Mansera. And in this exciting lesson, we are just going to discuss about sexual selection, how natural selection select different mates depending on different phenotypes, depending on their strength of the phenotype and their vibrant colors. And here we are just taking an example of peacock tail, that beautiful tail of the peacock, sometimes called as a train. And the reason behind its beauty, how such beautiful structure arise in the nature. Just consider this slide, okay? Uh, the structure, and uh, let me use some, uh, okay, so such beautiful structure definitely need a lot of energy. A lot of energy must be utilized in order to form these structure. And these structure are dangerous as far as the concealment or as far as the blending of the individual is concerned because such structure advertise a very clear signal that I'm here and come and eat me from a, a predator, from a predator prey relationship. But the main question is how natural selection evolves such structure without just eliminating those structure from the population. And these, there are so many exciting questions in, in this tutorial. We will try to find answer to such exciting question. And here's the theory, which is called as handicap principle. And today's presentation or today's lecture is all about that theory. Uh, we can see this slide. And here, this is how sexual selection resulted in two form, sexual phenomena where two different form of a species exist. And this is, if you've seen, there, if you see here, there is a radical difference, and this radical difference is a, a deceptive difference. And, and this is in a sense that this is a very different than this. And this is the female or the peahen, and this is the male or the peacock. And the peahen, if you look here, the peahen is a very dull, having a very dull color, no such beautiful wings, no such tail or train. And while if you consider the male, then the male is beautiful having different uh, a crown here and similarly a beautiful tail having a different patterns and definitely evolving or just creating these structure need a lot of energy a lot of work and not only energy not this this is not only expensive from this perspective but also that such structure advertise or give a very clear signal to the predator and such structure can also result in uh, in uh, create problems in flight. And this is a bird which do not fly because of this, these wings. These wings are not suitable. They are not suitable structure for gliding and for flight. And uh, so these are the questions where natural selection must work in order to inhibit such structure to evolve in the population. But instead, natural selection favor individual with such structure. How this work, let's see. Okay, so these, these things are just described that such characters would just reduce. Okay, let me use some, uh, uh, some uh, pens, some colors for you. Okay. Uh, okay, so the characters which just reduces the survival, they are called as, uh, they are called, they are called as deleterious. Deleterious are costly. They are costly. That characters which is reduce the survival and reduce the fitness of the uh, possessor. An animal possessing such traits, say for instance, this animal. This is an animal, and this animal possesses uh, this. This animal. Uh, this animal. Say for instance, this is an animal. Uh, a bit like this. My diagrams are not good. Anyway, this is an animal that possesses certain characters and these characters will decrease the fitness of this individual, then we can say that such characters are deleterious, they are costly, okay? And uh, definitely the peacock tail is such a character. Why? The peacock tail is such a character or example of such a character, why? Because the peacock tail reduce the survival of the possessor because it just reduce the power of light just reduce the power of light, make the birds more conspicuous or most visible to the predator. And definitely growing such structure, as I've told you in the previous slide, growing such structure need a lot of energy. And in animal kingdom, there's always 
drive toward the saving of the energy. The more you save the energy, the more fit you are. So these are the traits. Obviously, such traits like the pea cocktail, they are deleterious. They just reduce the fitness. But why they are there inside the population? Why peacock? And similarly, this is not only I'm talking about the peacock, but the birds. Just consider the whole class of the birds, class aves. Uh, you will see the males are beautiful. They are having a beautiful crowns. Similarly, they are having a very beautiful, vibrant colors of their feathers. And similarly, they have certain other structure phenotypes that make them very visible, very vibrant and very beautiful. So such ornamentation or such lavishly ornamented structure definitely give less fitness to the possessor, but why they are there? So the main question is why they are inside the population. So we will see uh, answer to this by handicap principle, okay? So let me clear this thing, uh, okay. Okay, so we are just moving to the next slide. Uh, okay, so such structure just bewilder the scientist and uh, just bewilder the scientist for um, like Darwin, such structure are also be, uh, perplexed to the Darwin and similarly to the other scientists, but in uh, why such structures are existed. Similarly, this is not only the case with the peacock, uh, train, but this is also the case with why the gazelle jump up and down when they see a line, and there are so many, and there are so many other uh, other things. Okay, so let me use some uh, some colors and some pen. Okay, so a Zahavi come. This was a gentleman who come up with an idea, and this idea is called as the handicap principle. And according to him, why such structure exists? Such structure exists because such structure, such costly structure gives some inheritable, reliable signal. How, what this, does this mean? It will be clear in a second in coming slides, okay? So uh, the Zahavi come with an idea and this idea is called as, this idea is called in evolutionary biology is a handicap principle, handicap principle. What is this principle and how such, how this principle just explain how this structure evolve despite they give some uh, disadvantage to the possessor. We will see this thing in, uh, in the coming slides. Okay, so just can see this one. Okay, so uh, the argument run like this. Just consider, okay, um, uh, let me use, okay, so suppose that the male in a population vary in their quality, some males have genes, okay. Uh, I'm using, uh, let me use some pen for you. Uh, okay, so let's consider individual inside the population and these individuals uh, have certain phenotypes and which give them higher fitness than the other. So if, uh, if we have a population like this and we have different individual inside this population like these like these four individual, I'm using different colors and different, uh, I'm using different shapes rather, not colors, excuse me. So uh, this is a population and, and this population have four individual. Two of them have good genes and two of them have bad genes. So if a female within this population just met with these without just looking at these two, because these two have some bad genes, I'm using this cross, and these two have some good genes, I'm using this this uh, tick. Okay, so these two are good, and these two are bad, and they do not have some phenotype as far as this goodness is concerned, rather they, they have a genetic makeup which is, which make them less fit, and this these two individuals have some genetic makeup which give them some more fitness, they are, they are having good genes for, for, for the offspring perspective. So if a female, if a female, if this is a female and this female match randomly with these, then definitely it will produce 50% of the offspring, 50% of the offspring with good genes. Why? Because 50% 50% of the offspring with good genes and similarly 50% of the offspring with bad genes. 
Why? Because 50% of the population is having good genes and 50% of the population have some bad genes. Okay, now, the thing is, now the thing will get a bit complicated, so be tuned and just listen it. If you just blink, you will miss. Okay, so uh, if this is the scenario, then 50% of the offspring would be this one and 50% to 50% would be this one. If random matting is just taking place in a female without knowing that which, which of the, which of the mat, which of the males have good or bad genes. But if some of these male, some of these mat have some handicap and here is the theory or here's the principle of handicap handicap principle. A handicap is simply, a handicap by Zahavi simply mean a handicap, a handicap, a handicap simply mean the deleterious character, the deleterious character. This simply mean the deleterious character, the character which give less advantage to its possessor which give less advantage to his possessor and the possessor is at reproductive disadvantage. So this is the handicap. Okay, so handicap. So now come again to this example. Uh, when random matting is done, then female do not know anything about anything about the uh, about the good or bad genes. But if some of the individuals have some handicap, phenotypic, uh, a phenotype like that of, uh, like that of the peacock tail, this is a sort of handicap. So a peacock tail, a peacock tail, a peacock tail, a peacock tail is act as a handicap. Why handicap? Because it is a trait or a character which just give less reproductive fitness to its possessor. It decrease the fitness, it decrease the F, it decrease the F. So such character are called as the handicap or such character are called as deleterious or costly character. Okay, if some of these possess, some of these, say for instance, these two possess such character handicap, then, and having this handicap, and again, they survive and they reproduce. This means that if they are having such handicap or such character, which just decrease their fitness, despite this, they live, they live, they are inside the population. This means such individual possess good genes such individual possess good gene. And this is the thing which is grave, which is difficult to grab about this hypothesis, uh, this theory or this principle, okay? So having handicap mean less fitness, but if some individuals possess this handicap and they survive to the reproductive age, then, then this means that these individual possess good gene because they can survive such handicap. This is the thing which is difficult as far as this handicap principle is concerned. I'm just repeating this again. Okay, so handicap, those mates are those male within the population that have a phenotype, handicap phenotype like the peacock tail. And despite that, they survive to the reproductive age. This means such individuals are healthy. Why healthy? Because such individual can survive up to the reproductive age. And on, on top of that, just forming such handicap is expensive. Such handicap can also um, maneuver the, uh, inhibit the uh, flight or create problem in, in the flight. Similarly, such handicap attract the attention of the predator. And despite this, if such individuals survive, then it means such individual have good genes, good genes, good genes. And here the natural selection or the sexual selection can work. Now the female mate only with those individuals which have those handicap. And this simply means this individual is good, having good genes. So such individual is like, if this is an individual, this is that individual, and I'm drawing some smiley, some smiley face for you. Okay, so this is a, an individual and this individual possessing handicap and reproduce and all that. So it just giving that signal, I am good. I am good. I am good. In other words, I have some good gene some good genes and when a handicap having good genes so now the female seeing those handicap a female seeing though that beautiful tail or 
are a train of a peacock and now the female come and female just met with this individual met with this individual why this individual possess good genes and those individual like this one i'm using a sad face because this time this individual do not possess any sort of handicap any sort of uh, such phenotype like beautiful train or beautiful uh, vibrant colors or vibrant feathers or beautiful feathers or such phenotype such individual is just giving a clear indication that such individual have bad genes bad genes and now the female do not mate with such individual and this is a principle which is called as a handicap principle so uh, it will be clear in further slides so for now let me clear all drawings and okay so let's consider this one uh this this thing okay so here the thing is clear the advertisement of the handicap in the sense that energetically costly to produce and maintain and it may reduce the male's ability in all these things now the thing is if a weak and sickly male likely cannot afford to divert energetic resources from basic metabolism to produce ornaments like that and this is the thing why female why female okay let me use some uh, color instead this time some different color okay so why female why this female met only with handicap only with handicap edge and not with those which are having such handicap such vibrant colors and all that it met with handicap because handicap is energetic it can convert resources into a beautiful phenotype it can survive though it is having that deleterious character but it can also survive with this character it means it is more potent it is more stronger and robust individual so um, a female just met with this individual and those individual which do not have this handicap h for handicap okay so those individual that do not have such handicap uh, not having such handicap such individual are at a reproductive are uh, sexually they are not fit why because such individual do not have healthy genes such individual do not have healthy genes and such individual cannot utilize the resources to convert these resources into some beautiful vibrant colors of the feathers are beautiful crowns and all that sexual dimorphic uh, characteristics so and this is the thing okay let me clear this again uh, and this one okay so let's consider this diagram okay here there are three individuals three individuals uh yes three individuals one individual with low medium and high fitness high fitness and similarly this individual having this small train or small feather these feathers these are tail feathers of are beautiful feathers of a peacock and this individual having a huge long large tail of robust having different patterns eye shape patterns different so a female would definitely be attracted a female will definitely would be attracted say for instance this is the female this female would definitely be attracted toward this individual and not toward this individual why because of the handicap this individual is having this individual is having that beautiful handicap this beautiful trait but this is a handicap why because it reduce its fitness it reduce its fitness as far as the predator are concerned but not it do not reduce its fitness as far as the mating with the female is concerned why because female will see the large this large tail this large tail the larger the tail the more willing the female would be okay and this and the important thing about the handicap principle is that this female 
these excuse me these males do not just write something over their body that i am healthy i am having good gene but rather uh, how would okay so these two male do not write something write uh, something on its body that i am good i am good or i am or i am bad or i am bad i am bad in like these thing similarly good or bad now the question is if these two individuals do not show or do not write something that i am good and i am bad as far as my genes are concerned then how this female would know their genetic makeup how would this female know that this is better or this one is better as far as the genes or genome is concerned so that these genes would be transferred to the offspring and this female want their offspring to be healthy to be healthy and if this female want their offspring to be healthy so how this female would decide that this male is better or this male is better this female decide by using this handicap thing this handicap or this trait or this deleterious trait which though it is a deleterious trait or costly trait but this trait show that this individual is having good genes why good genes because synthesizing such expensive structure definitely need a lot of resources a lot of resources and utilization are acquiring these resources so constructing this structure need resources and such individual are good in acquiring and acquisition and similarly in uh, utilizing these resources to convert these resources into such beautiful structure like this and this individual on the other hand do not utilize these resources and convert it into uh, uh, this long a uh, large tail similarly I consider a different another thing okay so from predator perspective this individual is more prone to the predators and this individual is less prone to the predator but despite this if this individual survive then this individual survive inside the population then it's mean this individual possess some guts some guts some potential potential to survive despite it is obvious despite it advertise its body to the predator similarly such structure also impede the flight and if this individual possessing this handicap despite possessing this handicap this individual can also fly it can also fly excuse me can also fly then this means that this individual is more fit because though it is having this handicap but it can also fly at the same time this means the genetic makeup of this individual is good good and how it is clear to the female it is clear to the female by seeing this handicap and this handicap is the tail feathers these beautiful feathers are this strain are this handicap though it is deleterious but it give this female a clear signal that this individual having good genes this is a good buddy this is a good guy and this individual having bad genes bad genes this individual having bad genes and this individual having bad genes so the female will match with this individual and leave this individual and here's natural selection or sexual selection evolve such beautiful traits because such beautiful traits are acted by the female and female by seeing such traits decide that whether the individual is more fit or not so this individual clearly give a signal that i am good come and match with me so this is the beauty of uh, handicap principle by the harvies okay so here we are considering three different individual individual one individual two uh, okay just clear the uh, rest of the things let me clear it for you to make it clear okay so we are having three individual two and three and for this third one you will definitely see that the mating success is here mating success is here on top on top mating success is on top here while for this individual for this individual the success is right here the success is a fitness cost or benefit is right here so this individual will definitely get more female to be inseminated in this these individual this individual will get less and this is somewhere in between okay so uh, let me clear this again 
and go to the next slide. Um, okay. So this is, and this is the next slide. Okay, so handicap principle do not limit it to only that of the train of peacock, but it can also be extended to other phenotype of the individual, say for instance, the bright color, bright color, and you know, uh, in class AVs, in class AVs, the, this is the male, this is the male, that have that bright colors and crowns and perform dances and different types of tactics in order to attract in order to attract the female, in order to attract the female. Similarly seen fishes, similarly other species of mammals and invertebrates, they are brightly colored and they're brightly colored give a clear signal that I am receptive. I am receptive. I am sexually attractive. I am having good genes. I am having good genes, G, good genes and come and met me. Okay, similarly, a large rack of antlers. So, uh, seemingly, the possessor, say for instance, there are uh, mammals that have antlers like a caribou, like uh, the deers. So there are many members of this deer family which possess antlers and there's a difference between antlers and horns. Okay, so antlers shed every year while horns do not shed and there are other differences as well. Okay, so antlers give its possessor a uh, reproductive disadvantage, but it can help the female to decide with this handicap, say for instance, antler is a handicap, it reduce the fitness um, of the possessor, but a female chooses an individual with antlers that it is healthy as far as the genes are concerned. How we will we have already discussed these things in previous slides, okay? And elaborate songs, okay, song production in birds. This is yet another, similarly in uh, other animals as well, like in frogs and these things. It produces songs to attract the mate. So producing songs attract the attention of the predator as well. So uh, it seems an expensive character, but producing songs in, uh, producing songs is a handicap and how it work. It will work through a principle, handicap principle, how female are attracted toward these songs. Similarly, capture prey items offer as a gift. Okay, this is a nuptial gift. And this is an interesting phenomena, nuptial gift. And here, this is an interesting phenomena in insects. Insects, in order to mate with the female, it will just give a gift to the female before mating, before the selection. And this is known as nuptial gift. And this gift may be some sort of food or some sort of small insects captured um, um, uh, captured by the male and, and give to the female, captured by the male and give to the female, and give to the female. Okay, so in nutshell, we can say, and this figure, uh, which is just here, we will describe this, uh, we, we, we have described this figure in the previous slide. Okay. So let me clear this slide and move further. Okay. Um, okay. So another interesting question is, or another interesting query is, the handicap act as an indicator of genetic quality, but why does the indicator have to be costly? This is an interesting thing. For example, uh, let me use some pen here for annotation. Say for instance, that beautiful train, that beautiful train or that beautiful tail of the, that beautiful tail of, of a peacock, why it is, why it is here, though its production, its construction or its making, its development is costly. Its development is definitely costly. Why it is costly, why it is here then? Why nature selection do not evolve it to be simple, to be simple structure. The more simple it is, the less expensive it would be. But natural selection do not work. Why? This is an interesting, a thoughtful query. How to answer this? Let's see on the next slide. Okay, so the thing is, why such expensive structures are there despite 
they give their processor uh, a reproductive advantage, though it is a sort of handicap, but it increases the, the fitness of the overall fitness of the individual as far as the production of the offspring is concerned. Okay, so why these structures are expensive? Why such expensive structures are there? Why not some simple structure so that a female just act on these simple structure? So the thing is, the reason is that the cost guarantees that the indicator will be reliable. And this is the magic. So consider a scenario like they're just like where, okay, um, I'm using pen for annotation. Consider scenario, this one, this is a scenario one. This is a scenario one. And in this scenario, let's consider, uh, which is not the case, let's consider a female, a female, this is a female and a female is choosy. Uh, female is choosy. So female choose the mates, a mate choice. And this phenomenon is called as a mate choice, intersection selection. Okay, and this scenario is that all the individual have some, all the individual have some, some economical or less costly phenotype. And this less costly phenotype is not reliable from the mate choice perspective of the female. Why? Because every male can cheat. Every male can just adopt such less expensive phenotype. So a female can mate with any one of these, though some of these individuals within this population have good genes and other have bad genes. But these female do not know this. Why? Because the phenotype is less expensive and every individual can form such ex a less expensive phenotype. And hence the phenotype is, or the handicap is less reliable or unreliable, 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 which is not needed. Now, consider the second scenario. And second scenario is this one. This is a scenario two. And in this scenario, this is the female. And this female select the individual. And these individuals are different. I'm using, let me use some different color. These individual, similarly, this individual, uh, excuse me, and uh, let me use some different color. And these individual, these individual having, okay, so there are two types of individuals, uh, rather three types of individuals. Okay, some of these individuals like this red one, like this red one have that beautiful handicap and handicap must be expensive. It must be costly. Why it would be costly? Handicap, handicap. Why it must be costly? It must be costly in order that not every individual would just cheat and form such costly phenotype. Definitely, those individuals which are reproductively more fit or genetically more fit, they will form such handicap because such handicap is expensive and its production is costly. And such in this case, we can say that the handicap must, here the handicap is reliable and reliable and a female with this reliability can match with this these individual because these individuals is just clearly giving this signal, I have good genes. And the other individuals clearly giving the, this signal, I have poor genes, I have good genes. But distinguishing these two from one another need a handicap, a handicap. And this is the essence of this theory uh, or this principle, handicap principle. Okay, so you will definitely find answer to that interesting question. Anyway, this is the last slide. Okay, so uh, here you can see an individual with handicap. Uh, let me use some color for you to annotate it, to make it stand out, to make it clear. Okay, so when an individual having no handicap, let me use some different color rather to make it just stand out. Okay, so uh, an individual, say for instance, this is an individual which do not have handicap. Such individual, if have, uh, if male of those individuals have bad genes, bad genes, then they will definitely, uh, if they alive, and male with good genes, and it can also alive within a population. 
But why they are alive here? They are alive here because they do not have any handicap, any character which just give them reproductive disadvantage and lead to their death, lead to their death. That's why they, they would be alive. So an individual with no handicap would, would live here, would live. But an individual with a handicap, with a character, with a deleterious or costly character, with a deleterious or costly character, such individuals with a handicap do not alive with bad genes. This is an important thing. They do not alive with the bad genes. They do not alive with the bad genes. Why they do not alive with the bad genes? Because that bad genes render them to be render them to be either they would fall to the predator or either they would fall to the diseases or either they would fall to some other calamities. That's why they would be dead. And those would be alive which are having good genes. This is the thing, good genes. Only those will be alive which have good genes. And by choosing those individuals that are alive and that are handicapped, a female, a female, if this is a female, so those individuals which are alive and with a handicap, it means they are potential, they are more robust individual. Though they are having that handicap, despite this, they are alive. It means they got some good genes and now the females select those individuals and mate with it and produce offspring, beautiful offspring. And this is where these beautiful handicap structures, though they give their possessor, apparently they give their possessor a reproductive disadvantage, but they give, in actual sense, they give their possessor a reproductive advantage over the other individuals. So, they are selected and this is the phenomena of handicap this is a principle of handicap okay that's all hope you will get this uh, and uh, it will work for you thank you so much if you have any question or any query you can let me know in the uh, in the whatsapp group or at google classroom okay so that's it for today's lesson uh, we will be 